Hello, friends. Hello, and welcome to this episode of the Thyroid Hotline. My name is Missy Beavers. I have a master's degree in nutrition, and I specialize in gut and thyroid health. I'm joined here today by a success coach in my program and also my friend, Stacey Price. Welcome. Thank you. So good to so be here. And so happy to have you. Stacy is a pre precision nutrition level one certified nutritionist. So thank you for coming and also sharing your insight and education as we have a conversation today. We want to talk about something that we're going through personally, each of us. And we know that so many women that we work with and also women who we haven't worked with yet are experiencing the same thing. And that is navigating your health in the current Western medical model. It's a doozy, right, Stacey? It's tough. Yeah. It's Absolutely. tough. Yes. And if you are here listening, there's a good chance that maybe you have a diagnosis of a thyroid condition. So maybe you've already been jumping through the hoops of going to doctors and asking for labs and being laughed out of the office when you ask for a full thyroid panel. You may have heard that your TSH is normal and there's nothing wrong with your thyroid, even though you're experiencing the over 200 things that can go wrong when your thyroid hormones are not working. You may actually have a diagnosis of Hashimoto's or Graves or have a known autoimmune issue and you're still not getting anywhere with the diagnosis. I think that to me, Stacey, I'd love for you to chime in on this. There's an extra level of frustration that comes with, first of all, you're chasing the diagnosis. Then you get the diagnosis thinking that that will be the ticket to getting seen and heard and actually getting care. And then when you have the diagnosis, you walk out empty handed. Have you experienced that? Yes, for sure. Um, empty handed, no answers, basically told, just take a pill. This is all you can do the rest of your life. It won't fix you, but, um, we'll draw your blood once a year and, and go from there. So there really aren't a lot of answers when it comes to thyroid health with the Western medical model. Yeah. Um, there's not a lot of training to look for root causes. It's just, you get the answers of it's your age or, you know, you're overweight. That would help if you lost weight or you did this to yourself. You didn't eat well. Mm -hmm. So, um, we get a lot of blanket answers. And so we try to correct those. We try to eat better. We try to exercise. We try to lose the weight and it's just running in circles constantly because yeah. nothing helps. Yeah. Oh, I love that so much. In my own story, I was diagnosed with Hashimoto's at eight years old. So right off the bat, I had the diagnosis, but this is back in the early nineties and nobody even knew really what Hashimoto's was. Nobody had any interventions. I mean, we're 30 plus years past that and we're kind of in the same boat. But I remember at that time, like you said, Stacey, they told me you'll take a pill every day for the rest of your life. Nothing you can do can fix this. Foods can't fix it. Lifestyle can't fix it. You're just going to take this pill. Oh, and by the way, it's not reversible. You're stuck with it forever. Mm -hmm. What kind of hope does that leave someone with? None. It just leaves no you hope at all. exactly stuck. And my number one symptom that took me into the doctor was weight gain. So I gained 50 pounds that first year from seven to eight, but then I just kept gaining weight. And so like you were saying, every doctor visit was, you need to lose weight. You need to lose weight. Your thyroid would work if you lost weight. You just need to lose weight. Well, as us thyroid sisters know, uh, those of us who are on the hypothyroid end, because, because the thyroid plays such a critical role in metabolism, you can't just lose weight. It's not as simple as eating less and spending hours at the gym that usually backfires. And we see a lot of, of women in our program, a lot of our clients who do that, they reduce their food. They spend more time exercising. They blow out their adrenals. They create even more hormonal issues than they had before. And so we are chasing after this idea that if we were in a smaller body, maybe we wouldn't have thyroid issues. So in my own case, in my twenties, I took that literally. It was when I was going to school to be a dietitian and I became anorexic. I fixated on calories. I fixated on eating as little as possible because the message was, if you eat less and exercise more, you'll be in a smaller body and your smaller body apparently will have a working thyroid. That's what I was promised, right? And so I did all the things. I lost a hundred pounds and guess what? It didn't fix your thyroid. 
what do you know? My thyroid still didn't work. And I remember so clearly, it was a devastating appointment with my doctor where I went in. She hadn't seen me since I'd lost 80 pounds. And she said, I remember this so, so deeply. She pulled in her chair so close. We were touching knees. And she said to me, you look so good. What are you doing? And I said, well, I'm eating carrot sticks and I'm drinking lemon water. And her eyes were big. And she was like, yeah, uh uh-huh. And I was like, that's it. That's, That's what I'm doing. Now for anyone, anyone, and I'm talking like anyone on the planet, if somebody tells you that, if, if a a dear friend or even a stranger tells you that, are you going to have a red flag? Red flag for sure. That (laughs) is not a healthy diet. Exactly. You should have a red flag. And I remember telling her that, and it was a cry for help. I was looking at her saying, I'm drinking lemon water. I'm eating carrot sticks. And I said, my hair's falling out. I haven't had a period in six months. I feel like I'm going insane. I have anxiety all the time. And she just had a smile on her face and was nodding her head. And she was like, well, you look so good. So whatever you're doing, just keep doing it. And I left that office. I was probably 20, maybe 22 at the time, 21 or 22. Went out to my car and I just sobbed because I had gone to this person for help. I knew what I was doing to to my body was not healthy, but I needed someone to say, stop, stop it. Instead, I was completely praised for this anorexia. I was praised for my eating disorders. Um, I think I left with a higher thyroid medication dose that visit and just encouraged to continue onward. Keep starving yourself. You look great. Yeah, we hear that all the time. Um, We do have thinner clients as well. And the answers they get is, well, you look good. You look fine. You don't look like there's anything wrong with you. Yeah. So you have the thinner people that are just as miserable as the hypo people, hypothyroid, who can't lose a pound. Um, And so the thinner people are getting told, well, you look fine. You look great. And then the heavier people are being told, you just need to lose weight. You just need to lose weight. That's your problem. And like you said, you can't, it's almost impossible to lose weight without going to extreme measures. And then that backfires. And later on that weight will come back and will come back with a vengeance and bring its friends. Oh yeah. All of our Mm -hmm. friends were having a a fat hoarding party. And that is why, you know, one of my special interests in this field is understanding why the body packs fat so easily. Why is the body holding on to fat? And within our program, we, we know, and we believe that fat is actually your body protecting you. So for these women that have a lot of fat stores, it's because their body is storing toxins for them. A lot of toxins get stored in fat. And if we are being exposed to toxins, which all of us are, cause we live in a, a modern world with a lot of toxins, we're talking like heavy metals, environmental toxins. Um, but even the toxins that things like mold produce or pathogens in your gut, they produce their own toxins. So if you have toxicity in your body or outside of your body that you're inhaling, those things will make you terribly sick. So if your liver is not able to bind up and clear those things out, which most of us become so burdened that we can't, the body needs to do something with that. So it'll pack it away as fat. And that is life-saving. That is phenomenal. We took those toxins, we put them into our fat tissue. Now we're not dying. Thanks body. But the backside of that is our thyroid will slow down from those same toxins, the same toxins that are causing fat to pack on or causing the thyroid to slow down. So we're gaining weight in terms of fat storage. Our thyroid is not working well, but all of this is to protect us from being a toxic mess that could potentially end us. Mm -hmm. So fat is not the enemy. Understanding why the fat is there, that is our goal. We want to understand what's going on in the body that is causing fat production. In my own case, that was that was a game changer for me when I finally understood that all of this excess fat stores, these fat reserves on my body were there for a reason and were protecting me. And building that or discovering that grace for myself to say, wow, you had my best interest in mind. Mm -hmm. Thank you, buddy. And then doing some work to uncover what was really going on. For me, it was complete chaos in my gut. And once I uncovered that, figured out what was going on. Well, yeah, 
fat cells were able to go away. They didn't need to store toxins anymore. And that's where that quote unquote effortless weight loss comes in. It's when we discover and correct the reason why the body's holding on to fat. I agree with you. When, when your body is healthy, your gut is healthy, that weight does start to come off. Um, and people say weight and we're all fixated on weight, especially as women, we're really, you know, there's the dad bod and that's cool. Yeah. But as women, we the don't mom, get a bod. mom bod. We don't yeah. get that. Um, but as you're getting rid of those toxins, you realize it's not necessarily all fat, but it's a lot of inflammation yeah. and toxins inflame your body all throughout your body. Yeah. And you'll realize as you start detoxing and your pathways start to open up that a lot of this inflammation is just kind of shedding off of your body. I love that. And two, we get so fixated on the scale. And part of that goes back to what we were saying with the Western medical model. We go to the doctor, we step on the scale. Um, they give us their disapproving glances because we've mm -hmm. gained weight since our last visit. Weight in terms of like you were saying, weight does not represent the composition. So we and I've experienced this myself. I was going to say we have clients in me as well. We have women come through all the time who do have a decrease in inflammation, who are able to start building muscle, who change the composition of their body. They're able to get rid of some of those toxic fat stores and finally start building up muscle. The number on the scale will never change in that case, but the composition of the body changes a lot. I'm, I'm going through this where I'm working on building more muscle. Um, I don't rely on the scale anymore because of my experiences. Like I was sharing, it's not a great indicator of my success, but I'm able to, you know, lift heavier weights and, and perform heavier physical tasks, which give me clues that I am building muscle and my composition is changing. So those are the things I'm more interested in, um, as a nutritionist, but also as a, a person in a human body, I'm more interested in what my body can do than what the scale says about me. I don't think that is a good indicator of anything. I agree. Totally. And there's a lot of, um, body dysmorphia going on. Yeah. Um, there's a lot of eating disorders and I have to say a lot of the women that come through our program have a lot of disordered eating just because, you know, we've seen all the diets, weight watchers, fetamine, um, slim fast, all these diets. And, and that teaches you more disordered eating. Yeah. Calorie it's reduction. Really, really yeah. hard on your body. Yeah. I appreciate that a lot because what we see in those cases is that you lose muscle really quickly mm -hmm. and the body can metabolize that muscle tissue specifically like the muscle under your arms. That's where those of us that have been chronic dieters. Yeah. We lose it really quickly. Um, yeah. When the adrenals are upset, those are our, our little stress glands in the body. Uh, they will go to that tissue. Usually that's the tissue they choose first to use as fuel. So if you're not putting enough fuel in your mouth, your body will go after uh, protein and fuel sources anywhere it can find it, which mm -hmm. biceps are a great place. Mm -hmm. So we start to get those flabby arms, but then we step on the scale and we've lost 10 pounds. Yay. <laughs> We're so happy. We don't even care. <laughs> that we're losing muscle, muscle strength and developing the lunch lady arms. Yeah. It is wild. It's wild how we've been trained and programmed to celebrate scale wins mm -hmm. and versus, you know, strength and body, um, yeah, body wins, like I was saying. So yeah, thanks for bringing that in. That's, that is something I personally have been through and that we see a lot of our women struggle with is exactly that focusing on the scale, developing eating disorders because of it, developing body dysmorphia definitely things we want to stay away from. So right. how do we do that? Well, we become advocates for ourselves. So this is, this is the real reason we, we brought you here today was to talk about how do we advocate for ourselves? How do we, uh, live within the Western medical model, get the information that we need, use doctors for what they're there for. We love doctors. We're grateful for doctors. Mm -hmm. Uh, and we are also frustrated at times with the care that we receive. So we're both going to share Stacy and I kind of what we have personally been dealing with and, um, the advocacy that we have been doing for ourselves and yeah, just sharing a bit of our stories. So, um, I'll hop with mine first. Cause it's short. Stacy's is so exciting. <laughs> I have a bit of story jealousy. <laughs> um, so Stacy and I both have been working on our health for our whole lives, right, Stacy? Yes. And I say that 
as something that is really, really good. I don't think that's a bad thing that it's like, yeah, I've been, you know, a victim of my disease my whole life. No way. I have been a beneficiary of learning how my body works. And Mm -hmm. because I was diagnosed so early, it really did open up my career at eight years old. That's when I became interested in nutrition because the Western medical medical model wasn't working. So at eight years old, my mom started trying different diets and we started growing our own food and doing things holistically and naturally. And I'm blessed to have that experience because of my diagnosis, not in spite of it. So that's something that really worked for me with my disease. So, um, Fast forward after 28 years of needing medication, as I was mentioning earlier, I discovered my gut was a raging mess and that was creating uh, the immune attack on my thyroid tissue. So was able to reverse that with a targeted protocol specific to me. This is what I help women do now is uncover the infections that are creating the issue and then we can address those, rebalance the gut. In my case, that equated to no longer needing medication. And that was a fantastic and unexpected result of my healing journey. The goal is never to get off of medication, though it is beautiful and wonderful when that happens for our clients and for ourselves. The goal is to uncover what's causing the thyroid to not work in the first place. And when we can uncover that, we can answer the why did my thyroid stop working? And then we can address those reasons Sometimes people do get off meds. And I was one of those people who I haven't taken meds in four years, which is phenomenal. And um, feeling phenomenal, though. I said phenomenal twice because it's that good. Um, feeling fantastic. And that that was my goal. My goal always was to figure out what's gumming up my metabolism, fix those things, reclaim my health. And yeah, that equated to no longer needing medication. Now, does that mean that I walked off into the sunset with perfect health forever? Yes, it did. End of story. No, (laughs) it didn't. Uh, It meant that I had more tools and understanding of my body than I did before. But because I'm a human and I live in a human world, I'm still subject to disease and discomfort and despair like the rest of us. Mm -hmm. So this last year, 2020 three, it's been a doozy for my body. Yeah. We, for both of us, right, Stacey? Right. We've had a doozy of a year. Um, in the sense that I've had COVID three times, that is frustrating. It's really frustrating to someone who, um, in my scenario, who has a master's degree in nutrition and has all the tools and abilities to help support the body when it gets a virus and help the body prevent, future viruses. That has not been the case this year. So I've had COVID manifest in different forms, three different times. And there have been times when I've been frustrated and upset with my body. But because of this, I've been spending a bit more time in doctor's offices than I I normally do. Usually I'm there once or twice a year just for lab work. Um, I prefer to to not need lab work very often, but I've been going a bit more, you know, requesting labs, asking for specific things to be checked, wanting to check in on nutrients or on liver function or adrenal function. And I have felt the frustration that many of you are feeling and that we're healing, hearing from most of our clients. And it's the frustration of going into a doctor who um, many of these doctors I, I adore, I'm friends with, I've seen them for decades. They're great, but they still have to abide by their rules and they still have to abide by their training. And as I've gone into these appointments, you know, I'll state what's going on. I'm frustrated this has happened. My first round of COVID in January, I gained 20 pounds just out of the blue, gained 20 pounds, which again, as I was sharing, goes back to toxicity. That virus created some major inflammation in my body, some major toxicity, gained 20 pounds. Because I know that that 20 pounds did not come from eating packs of Oreos and donuts every day. (laughs) I am a little concerned, right? I want to get some info on that. So I go to the doctor, I share what's happening. And the conversation becomes about the scale that don't, I know I've gained 20 pounds. Yes, I do. That's why I came to get some blood work done. Okay. Well, you know, this is a problem and you need to lose this weight before we can do anything okay, well, what I'm not asking for medication. I'm not, I just want you to draw some labs. Can we just get some labs? Mm -hmm. And it's so funny because multiple times this year at these appointments, when I've been going to request labs, um, 
they've offered other diagnoses. So this year I've been diagnosed with chronic fatigue and fibromyalgia, just out of the blue, no testing done, just a guess. (laughs) And it's fascinating to me to have this experience that I hear all of you experiencing where it's like, I went in asking for labs. This, I just want, I just want labs. Can you just draw my labs? I just want to see what's going on with my liver and immune system and adrenals and being met with, well, you need to lose weight. And I think you have chronic fatigue. Okay. (laughs) That's not, that's not what I came here for. So, um, Yeah, I've done a bit of doctor shopping this year. I've seen several different people. I have a great practitioner um, now who I adore. But just so you all know, I I, this experience has been great because we always have to advocate advocate for ourselves. And I've been removed from the Western medical model for a while because I usually just order my own labs, and I can do that, and we can do that for clients as well. But In this particular case, I was wanting a lot of panels done and I was wanting to use that insurance that we pay for. So it makes sense to go in and have a doctor pull those um, instead of paying out of pocket. And yeah, I I was really shocked to have that experience that we all experience where it's like, can I just get some labs? No, I think you need to lose weight. All right. If I lose the weight, will you draw the labs? (laughs) (laughs) So great. Anywho, that has been my experience. I think that, or I hope many of you will resonate because I'm sitting in it too. Stacey, do you resonate with this experience? I resonate very much. So I'll just give you a quick thyroid background for myself. I was diagnosed at 24. I'm 46 now. Um, I came to your program over two years ago because nothing ever got better. And as I aged, my weight just packed on and packed on. Um, Fatigue was my biggest symptom. Uh, after going through the program, um, I think mindset was the biggest change for me, but I felt so much better. Um, I finally had all my symptoms under control. It was just an amazing transformation. And so here I am just living my best life. I, I have talked to my doctor about getting off medication and he's like, sure, you can try if you want. But I felt so good. I was like, you know, I'm happy where I am right now. And mentally, I don't know that I'm ready after being on medication for 20 years. It's, it's, a it's scary game. Yeah. It's, it's scary. scary. It's very uh-huh. scary. And it's like, I just started feeling better. I don't know if I wanted, I, I wasn't ready to start that journey. Yeah. Um, so fast forward last spring, um, like you, I started feeling strange, you know, not feeling well, I didn't get COVID, but, um, I had been on, um, using a, a a face cream from my dermatologist, pretty toxic face cream to prevent skin cancer, January, February, March, um, February, I started not feeling good. A lot of GI symptoms, um, fatigue. I gained 10 pounds in one week. Yeah. Like, how does that happen? What happens? Um, so we, I did notice that I did have parasites. So I called my naturopathic doctor and, um, he prescribed a medication and, I started taking that medication and, and I started feeling better. My GI upset was, was gone. And I finished the course of that. Um, but then I started getting some weird skin acne. I'd never, I I was blessed to never have to deal with acne. That's one thing I never had to deal with Uh, as a teenager, adult, nothing. So to have it everywhere was, was like, wow, what is, what is going on? And my weight kept creeping up and creeping up and creeping up my fatigue also creeping up. And, um, I did another course of that face cream in August and the beginning of October, my body just shut down. I, I went on a hike one day, a six mile hike. And at the end I was so nauseous. I had to stop. I thought I was going to vomit. Um, and I thought, great, well, I'm getting the stomach flu. Um, so after four weeks of having the stomach flu, um, just, it was just severe nausea and fatigue and, um, just a fullness in my tummy. Yeah. So I, I finally go to the, oh, and, and I had the worst acne rash I had ever had. I mean, it, one day I was clear the next day it was cut. My whole face was covered. Yeah. So I did go to the dermatologist first and she said, this is polybacterial. I want you to take this medication. And I said, I'm, are you sure it's bacterial? What if it's yeast, you know, caused by yeast. 
she's like, well, the last thing I would do would be to take a biopsy. And, and I was thinking if we don't sure what it is, what's causing it, and we could just take a biopsy and send it in. And then we would know for sure. Why wouldn't we do that? But it being the last thing, I don't, I don't understand. You'd rather prescribe medication than you would um, just to scrape some off and send it to in, test you know? and no. I, yeah. I mean, I have insurance. She doesn't pay for it. I do. So, <laughs> yeah. um, so I just took the medication. And I took it home and I didn't want to take it. I just said, thank you. And went home and I thought, I'm not going to take this. I don't want to, I don't feel good. I don't want. And so, um, still not feeling well. And my symptoms were getting worse. My, I had all the symptoms of liver disease, dark urine, my skin, my eyes were turning yellow. So I went to my family doctor who, who I love. I think he's a great person. Um, and I talked to him and told him all the symptoms that I'm having. And I'm not a doctor don't claim to be, but when I do my, I do like to research. I do like to read and everything pointed to either liver or gallbladder. And so I was talking to him and he said, yeah, it's probably, um, a urinary tract infection. (laughs) (laughs) That's what makes me laugh. As a woman, your eyes are yellow. It's probably a UTI. Probably. And your urine is orange. Yeah. <laughs> um, and he took a dip in the office and he said, well, there's no bacteria in it, but I want you to take these antibiotics because I think it's urinary tract infection. And I said, well, I've had a urinary tract infection. I know what that feels like. It's c- extremely uncomfortable. You know, I would know. Yeah. And he said, well, just humor me and take these. It's a five-day course of antibiotics. And then he wanted me to take um, some omeprazole for stomach acid. I said, in my life, I have never had any trouble with stomach acid. He's like, well, just humor me. Take it for a few days. That might be why you're nauseous. And I, you know, and this went against my better judgment, but I was so confused at how I was feeling. I went home. I did do, I did do the course of antibiotics. Um, I tried the omeprazole. It made me terribly sick, probably because it was reducing stomach acid that I didn't need reduced. Right. And my food was just sitting in there and it felt awful. Um, so, and nowhere in this conversation did he say, let's draw some labs. And I, I, in fact, brought my last set of labs that showed a liver enzyme that was in the red just by two points, but it was there. Still a clue. Nothing about it. Nothing about it. Yeah. So after the, I did the antibiotics and I tried the omeprazole, I quit it. I called the office and I said, can I please get labs drawn? And so they did that. They got the labs drawn. And I remember I talked to you that morning. This is where the fun starts. (laughs) Yeah. It was so (laughs) scary. I had 12 extremely high markers on my labs, either high or low, you know, depending, um, that all were pointing to the liver. And so I went to, I, I live in a small town. And we're not known for the best hospital care, but so I skipped it. I went to the city, um, went to Scottsdale and checked. I just went to the ER. I brought my labs and I said, this is how I feel. These are my labs. And they said, okay, we're going to admit you. I mean, it was, it was very quick. It was like not a discussion. Well, should we pause for a second? We're talking about liver numbers. Can you, can you share the numbers that they were? Cause we're not talking about two uh, points above normal range. No, not two points above. It was over a thousand points above normal range. Yeah. We're riding high. Yeah. Hundreds and hundreds of points, depending on the enzyme, the liver enzymes. um, We're were talking about for us, nutrition nerds, we're talking about her ALT, AST. Those are two enzymes that the liver produces when there's damage going on, tissue damage. Mm -hmm. So those are the high that we're going on. Yeah. And Billy Rubin. Which yeah, your Billy Rubin, yes, counts, breakdown. Counts mm-hmm. for the eyes and the skin was over five. And yeah. um, there's a lot going yeah, on. A lot going on. <laughs> Went to the the um, hospital, they checked me in. And there starts the, it, I feel like it's almost a push between different doctors. You know, um, I did explain, you know, okay, these are the two medications I've had that were out of the ordinary. It was last spring. It was seven months ago. They found out. As soon as I said naturopathic, you could see the doctor's face. They lost it. Yeah. Because a lot of Western medicine doctors don't agree with naturopaths. Yeah. And I've had my naturopath say, you know, have a conversation with him. He's like, yeah, a lot of them are quacks. You know, I mean, it happens. (laughs) So, but also, um, you know, I just felt shamed for having a naturopath. It was the the stare down like you have a naturopath. You did this to yourself. 
Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. And, and the doctor made it a point to come out to say, you need to call your naturopath and tell him that he did this to you. Oh my goodness. <laughs> yeah. So I was like, okay, I'll let him know. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Um, so I get up in my hospital room. I was there eight days. Um, I was on IV for three days and it did take the numbers down a little bit. The liver enzyme numbers came down a little bit. Billy Rubin came down a little bit, but then it would spike and then it would come down. Um, I wasn't really being treated for anything, although I did have, you know, over 70 blood tests. I had a CAT scan, an MRI, an ultrasound, a liver biopsy and a liver pressure test. So fun. Um, and meanwhile, so in the evening, I have a hospitalist doctor coming in and talking to me in the morning. I have the GI team, which deals with liver talking to me. I have a hematologist coming and talking to me because I had so much iron and ferritin in my blood and they were not on the same page, not talking to each other, not talking to each other, you know, and they're saying, I don't know why. I don't know why. Well, tell me about your supplements. They say, I'm like, okay, well, I'll show you my supplements. This could be caused by vitamin A. I can't believe how much vitamin A is in this drink. And I remember texting you and you said it's, it's the equivalent to a cup of carrots a day. And so I felt shamed for my supplements. Um, You need to stop all these supplements and, and all these being a probiotics and magnesium and, and a vitamin drink basically. And that's, um, I felt shamed for that. And uh, so they tested my vitamin A because they said, this is probably from vitamin A from all the, from your drink. You caused this from your drink that has the equivalent of half a sweet potato. Yeah. So yeah. when I get my vitamin A labs back, guess what? The low end is 40. I'm at nine. Yeah. <laughs> I have almost no vitamin A in my system. But nobody, nobody talks to you about that. No one even mentions that. No, no one even says anything. They just said, oh, you know, they, they, they're like surprised and shocked. And how could yeah. you take all this? And then, and then when my numbers come back fine and actually low, they don't say anything. Yeah. Like there's no, oh, you're actually, your vitamin A is really low. We, can we? remedy this somehow. Um, there's no, no teamwork there. And then, um, he said, okay, we're not getting any answers. What, what can we do? Why did that, you know, why did this happen? Well, we might not know. We may never know why this happened. I said, okay, can you guarantee me that there's no cancer? There's no cirrhosis. Well, we couldn't do that because you need a biopsy. I said, well, can I have a biopsy? And, um, The hospitalist said, I wanted you to have a biopsy on day two. Okay. This was day seven in the hospital. And I'm talking to the GI doctor and, and I said, can I have a biopsy? And she said, well, that's, that's up to me to decide. And I said, well, you know, Dr. Zima last night said, um, he would have done it on day two. She's like, that's up to me to decide. Yeah. (laughs) So I had to talk to her and I did, and I advocated for myself. I said, listen, you don't know what's happening. You don't know why it's happening. If this gives us more information, wouldn't that make sense just to do it? Yeah. It's covered under my insurance. My deductible is now all paid. Right. They're not you paying know. for it. Yeah. Yeah. And she said, well, I understand you're curious. I said, well, it's not just curious. I want to make sure that there's no cancer in my liver. There's no cirrhosis of the liver. Right. So I can have a plan of action to get better. And she said, well, let me talk to my team turns out every single doctor on the team had signed off except for her. Yeah. So it took me seven days to get a biopsy that I could have got on day two. It's so frustrating. It's holding the test hostage. And for, for what goal, what, and not to sidetrack, but we see this all the time for women asking for a full thyroid panel. It's like, no, we only, we only draw TSH. Well, I'd like free T3, free T4 antibodies. No, there's no indication that you need that. Mm -hmm. We hear that all the time. And it's that same concept, like you're saying, I'm paying for this. This is my insurance. I'm paying the premium. It's frustrating. And I think doctors forget, um, it, yeah, there's a doctor patient relationship, but we're still customers at the end of the day yeah. per se, Yeah. you know, we still, we know our bodies. And I think that's where a lot of thyroid sisters, you know, get confused because they're like, well, I know my body, this isn't normal. And you go to doctor and they talk you out of it or they talk you into antidepressants. Well, yeah. And in your case specifically, you know, you have the portal where, um, the hospital portal, well, they're giving you the lab results in real time and 
you were sharing those with me. We had a great adventure together, Stacy and I learning for a, <laughs> sure, a week because sure. I I'm a lab nerd. I love reading and interpreting labs and that's within our wheelhouse. That's what we do within the healthy thyroid system. But like you were saying that you would get results of the MRI results of the ultrasound results of the, and, and we're not, we're not trained to read those in the sense that that's not our career field. However, when it's written in plain English, <laughs> it says this was found. And then yeah. you ask a doctor about it and they're like, oh, no, 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 that didn't happen. It's it's confusing when you ask for follow up on something that you just read or you see markers that are high, blazing high out of the range. And you're like, hey, so I'm just curious because these markers are high. Oh, they don't mean anything. OK. Right. Or you get markers back that are low or high and they they don't even talk to you about it. Yeah, exactly. It's just completely brushed off. And yeah. the thing your your case, uh, Stacy's case, of course, is extreme in the sense that there was an acute and immediate response. And as we've been unraveling this, we can kind of trace it back. Like you said, there's there's the the chemotherapy cream used on your face, mm -hmm. but then that is causing some inflammation and some liver issues to begin with. But then you throw in an antibiotic for a UTI that doesn't exist, and that seems to be the nail in the coffin for your case, where the gut and the liver cannot keep up with that. So what happens in cases like that? And this is, can I talk about Stacey, your ferritin? Do you mind if I yeah. share it? Okay. Yeah. Um, so what happens in cases like this is when there's massive inflammation in the body, your body will push ferritin out of the tissues and into the bloodstream. So the body does that as a life saving mechanism. And we see both extremes in the thyroid world where either a people will have really high ferritin or B they'll have really low ferritin. So it just kind of depends on how your, your body responds to injury, inflammation, pathogens. I'm on the opposite end where low ferritin has been my running theme. So the body's doing that to, as a life preserving mechanism. However, when you dump ferritin, so much ferritin so quickly, the liver cannot clean that out. And that's where they were running with your, your theory here was that your liver was just so overrun with ferritin that it was shutting down, which was creating the those enzymes to skyrocket because there's tissue damage going on. But as a nutritionist, this is where I am so interested in this because as a nutritionist, that's where vitamin A plays a key role because vitamin A is essential for getting ferritin back in the tissues where it belongs. And so that's a really key marker that they checked on you is like, well, your vitamins A, a is low, but that means nothing to anyone. It just means they're trying to rule out that that wasn't the cause. Now, to be clear, high vitamin A and specifically retinol form, if people take massive amounts of that, yes, it can damage the liver. We are most commonly um, familiar with that in the form of Accutane. And that's why Accutane has a warning on it for liver damage because it's synthetic high dose vitamin A. So yes, they've probably had people admitted, Stacy, that like you, took Accutane and had liver damage. So that was in their benefit to assume that or question that. Um, but yeah, interesting, as we're getting all the pieces of your puzzle, we're able to say, okay, yeah, there's some key nutrition pieces here that are giving us clues, but we don't know why. We don't know what caused that ferritin dump in the first place. So that as Stacy and I were texting and, and talking about this, we're like, okay, was it a virus? Was there a bacteria? What happened here? Parasites were part of the puzzle before. Is it fungal? Is it mold? There's so many pieces that none of those tests, over 70 tests, none of them showed. Mm -mm. <laughs> All we got out of that was there's some low vitamin A and you've got some high ferritin going on. So now you come home and we're still watching numbers. We're just going to wait and see was there was their idea, right? Yeah, I've been to three follow up visits and it's just, well, we'll wait and see. It looks like and, and my numbers are two of my liver enzymes went down. One went up um, minimally. But um, yeah, just wait and see. I went to the hematologist yesterday. It was just, we'll test your iron and ferritin in two weeks and we'll wait and see. Um, yeah, I, I went to the GI follow-up and this was interesting because halfway through she said, oh, I see you didn't get scheduled. You haven't had a colonoscopy. And I said, no, not yet. And she said, well, would you like to schedule that? And <laughs> I don't think right now is a good time to go under anesthesia. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm trying to heal my liver. I did not say that. She's very sweet. And I said, no, I just think, you know, I should probably wait till I'm fully recovered before that happens. She's like, oh yeah, yeah, that's a good idea. So 
it's just, you know, and it's how they're trained. It's nothing to do with them personally. It's just how they're no. trained. And I will be the first one at their door if I need help. So don't, which you me. were, you were. Yeah. Yeah. I was. Yeah. And I, I don't dislike doctors at all. I just, I wish there was, um, that they would listen a little bit closer Yeah, and, um, try to help you not just cover up your symptoms, but to figure out why you're having the symptoms and fix that rather than hand you a pill. Truly. And, um, in that same breath to trust the experience in your body, because as you were saying, even back to the UTI, it's like, yeah, you know, like you're telling him I've had a UTI before. I know how that feels. This is not that. Mm -hmm. And what was so interesting to me, as you were talking, I was thinking about how we as a population of people have been trained to trust doctors over our own intuition. We have been trained to believe that they know more about our bodies than we do. And it's strange. It's strange how we are so willing to accept the answer of you're going to take a pill every day for the rest of your life as truth. Like we're just trained to take that as truth. And everyone agrees that that's a part of our reality. (laughs) It's like the weirdest thing to think about. And like you're saying, within my program, we do a lot of mindset work. We do a lot of nervous system reset work because it's this type of thinking that we maybe aren't even choosing to think this way. This may be something that our parents modeled for us or that people in our culture and community. I mean, we watch medication commercials on TV. Like this is, we live in a world where they pitch medications to us in between watching our favorite show. Like that is wild to me that we as a people are so accepting that this is the solution. And I'm going to take this every day for the rest of my life. It's baffling. Now, that being said, I as well, Stacey will be the first one. And we use the medical system um, all the time for my husband's leukemia. I'm so blessed and grateful for They've, they've kept him alive and kept him thriving. This is not a doctor bashing session. This is saying that we, as the patient, the customer, the client, we have the ability to advocate for ourselves and to say, this is what I'm experiencing in my body and no, I'm not a doctor, but it it doesn't feel like what you're saying, or I'm not, I'm not seeing what you're seeing. We have the ability to say that, and we have the ability to to request and to advocate and to speak for ourselves. That can be really hard to do. That can be really hard to do. And it's scary. It's scary. You know, I, I, I find myself preparing before I go to the doctor and I have my questions and I have my confidence and then I get there and I'm like, "Mm." you know, I'm really, I'm really just, I, I just feel like beneath them and, 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 um, maybe I feel a little dumb sometimes say it how I know how I feel it. And I think that's, I've learned a lot after going through your program. Um, just, just to know, I think a lot of our program is to know how your body is, how it reacts, what you can expect from it, how it feels when it's healthy, how it feels when you eat something that's not good for it. Um, a lot of the mindset work came from, I hated my thyroid. Like I hated my thyroid. (laughs) I hated my medication. I was so mad at it. I was yeah. mad at my body because I had Hashimoto's in it. And the, ex- the explanation you get for Hashimoto's is your body is attacking itself. How how sad is that? How negative is that? You end up hating these parts of your body. And when I remember the call we did on mindset and I was like, oh yeah, how is my thyroid going to feel when I say I hate you all the time or my medication, I put it in my mouth and like, I hate this. My brain's going, these things are bad. You know, we hate them. Yeah. Um, so, and I found myself saying that a few weeks ago and in my brain, I was like this stupid liver. And then I realized I had said that and I was like, oh, that's not good. Like this sweet little organ is working its heart out for me. And so now I find myself going, come on, girl, we can do it. We can do it. You know, I'm talking to my liver, but, um, you know, I just appreciate that. I, you know, it didn't come to something very, very serious where I had to have a transplant or I had to have, you know, extreme measures and, you know, eight days in the hospital is hard, but I'm home and, and I'm, I am getting better. And they ruled out all the big, scary stuff, which I think is the main, the main victory of your, your time. 
They did. So I went in with hepatitis, which is just an inflamed liver. And I left with hepatitis, hepatitis. an inflamed liver. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, but yes, they did rule out everything. Every single part of my body has been imaged. So I'm, I'm pretty confident in my health. <laughs> Those will be on your Christmas card this year <laughs> for imaging. Right. So, so many women leave with diagnoses that end in itis. That is like one of the medical field's favorite diagnoses. Just so we're clear, itis means inflammation. So you can put it after anything you want and it means it's inflamed. So thyroiditis, we hear that a lot for our clients. That means you went to the doctor, they touched your thyroid, they felt that it was a little inflamed. They weren't sure why they didn't do any more work to uncover what's going on. So they just diagnosed you with thyroid itis. Your okay. thyroid's inflamed. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You go to the doctor because your gut's upset. I actually have this diagnosis. Um, you know, you're not pooping. You're having issues with uh, gas, bloating, constipation, diarrhea. They diagnose you with gastritis. <laughs> your gastrointestinal tract is inflamed. Thank you. I already knew that when I came in. Right. You have hepatitis. Your liver is inflamed. So yeah, these itis diagnoses, many of us walk away with them and they're they're just a description of what's going on. They're not explaining why. And this is why, you know, Stacy, with your experience in mind, this is why I am so passionate about finding out why. Why is this happening? What is going on in the body that created this, this issue? And the main reason for understanding why is so that we can prevent it from happening again. Mm-hmm. Right. That's that's one of yeah. your main things. You know, like we need to know why this happens so that we don't go back to the chemotherapy cream. We don't go back to that. Right. Like there, we need to know why, you know, covering up the symptom isn't necessarily a good idea, um, but allowing your body to heal, obviously. But you need to, the right things to help your body heal, you know, um, yeah. the right foods, the right supplements if you take them. Um, but, yeah, you don't want to go back. And it's like, I I don't know. I mean, could my liver flare up again in, you know, six months and, yeah. and, um, or it's like with your thyroid, it's how do I, how do I keep from going backwards in my health? Yeah. And I think that's a big part of a lot of questions I get in our program. Well, I'm done. It's a, you know, it's a three month protocol and a lot of questions I get, well, I'm, I'm just done then. Right. Like my health is good. No, uh, your health is good, but yeah. no, you're not just done because your whole life, you're going to be working on health. And yes. no, I never anticipated getting, you know, any sort of hepatitis, any sort of, he uh, liver disease. Um, but you have to work on what's presented before you, but you continue your health journey. Uh, we give, we give these ladies the tools to know how their body is, um, when something's not right. And we have make suggestions for them to continue your health journey because it doesn't just stop at the end of a protocol. We're going to go through life. We're going to be exposed to toxins. We're going to be exposed to, to different environmental things. Um, people move into houses that have mold and that makes yeah. them sick. Yeah. So it's not a, it's not a one and done ever. And it's just, you, you just got to figure out the best way to help your body through the rest of its life. Truly. And to listen to listen and learn, like you said, to the messages your body's sending, because like you, I think for me, the biggest pivotal moment in my healing was the mindset. And we call this nervous system regulation now or nervous system dysregulation. They're the same thing, but regulating my nervous system via recognizing the thoughts that were so chaotic, so icky, just icky, stinky thoughts about how much I hated my body, how my thyroid never works, how this is like such a burden to function this way. Other people don't have this problem. Why do I have this problem? And recognizing that I was running under a narrative that was really, really unkind, which is interesting because I would consider myself to be a kind person. And a people pleaser, if you will, I'm recovering people pleaser. Many of us thyroid sisters are people pleasers. We want other people to be happy. We want other people to be comfortable. And we were concerned about their needs before ours. Mm -hmm. And that translates into a lot of self-critical thinking that would never come out, never come out of our mouths. Mm -hmm. We would never talk to anyone else that way because we're so concerned about them and their feelings and their needs. And so, yeah, in my journey, discovering that the nervous system dysregulation that I was creating with my thoughts and learning tips and tools on how to regulate that, um, that's a key factor. And then moving forward, 
into, into good health, I think that's one of my favorite tools just to be able to say, okay, where am I at? What am I thinking? What's my view of this situation? Because I can either run off the rails and completely dysregulate my nervous system with a, a specific set of thinking, or I can control that and I can say, okay, here's the information that we have and here's how we're going to program moving forward. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You can't always control everything, but you can control how you respond. Yes. And that is so important in life is, is how you respond, especially to your own body. Yeah, totally agree. And, you know, one of the things I had to make complete peace with is, um, the hard, fast thinking about, you know, you're only healthy if you're not on medication, that can be a narrative that runs through a lot of our heads. If you're taking medication, you have failed. You are not well, you have failed. Everything that you're doing is worthless because you're taking medication. That is a narrative that a lot of us have been handed, again, by our culture, by our doctors, by things that we hear other people say. I don't subscribe to that because there, there's no there's no yardstick for measuring that. There's no actual, we're going to set you up against this and say, okay, because you take thyroid meds, but you also focus on your mindset and you focus on your foundational habits and you eat well and you, you take care of your stressors. You're still a failure because yeah. <laughs> you take thyroid meds. That's, that is so self-defeating and there's no room for growth or progress within that thinking. So, so yeah, just assessing where our thoughts are at what we're telling ourselves, how we're programming our, our cells to function. There's so much power in that. There is. I, I can't believe it's like taking your power back. Yeah. And now I can go to the doctor for a thyroid visit and be like, okay, thank you for the information. And it yeah. doesn't, it doesn't break me. It doesn't break my heart. It doesn't discourage me. Um, you know, that's not true in every case, but for thyroid, which was most of my life, that's true now. I can go to the doctor. I can ask for the full panel. I can tell them why I want the full panel. Yeah. Um, You have the tools. Yeah. Yeah. I can do those things now. Yeah. It's so good. And like you said, you know, there, there is that fear and hesitancy of going in and telling someone how to do their job, which that's not what's happening here. We're going to the doctor. We're asking them for specific things. And um, like you said, a lot of times I, for me personally too, it's taking that prescription and saying, thank you and never filling it. It's saying, thank you so much for your time. And I appreciate those thoughts. And one of my favorite ones is thank you for sharing your thoughts. I always love that one because it reminds my brain that they're not my thoughts. So it's a very simple way of saying, oh, I really appreciate you sharing your thoughts. And that's not facetious. I do. I appreciate everything that they have learned and experienced to share that. That doesn't match my experience, but I'm thankful for them sharing what they know and what they've learned. It is a benefit. So yes, this is not a doctor slamming session. This is simply to say, we get to advocate for ourselves. And I say, we get to, it is a blessing to be alive and to have the ability to advocate because if you're advocating, it means that you are breathing. And that is how we like people, right? We like people alive and we want people to be well. So we like to start every day. We like to start every day with breathing. (laughs) We have very low standards. (laughs) <laughs> if you're breathing and your heart is beating, we are happy. We can work with that. We can. We can work with that. Yeah, we can absolutely yeah. work with it. So yes, advocacy, we all can do it. If you feel like you need help with that, if you feel stuck in your experiences right now with your doctor, you feel like you're not getting anywhere. If you want targeted in-depth testing, well, we would love to help, right, Stacy? come to our program. Yes. Come to our program. Yep. Come get some answers. Um, our biggest focus in the healthy thyroid system is to help you uncover why, why your thyroid's not working, why your body's behaving the way it is. We do that through targeted testing that you can do at home from those answers. I put together a personalized protocol for you so that you can address specifically what's wrong instead of guessing. Like you said, Stacey, let's just guess. Yeah. And a key a key main ingredient in that protocol is validation. Yeah. It's a, we, a lot of the time we don't get validated at the doctor for our symptoms, for our issues. Um, they kind of like to lump them in different groups, but that test personally was the most validating test I have ever had. Yeah. Cause you can actually see why. Yeah. Yep. And we're so confident. We actually offer a guarantee that if you come into this program, you get the testing done and nothing is wrong on it. I'll give your money back. Because we've done over a thousand of these tests and it's never happened. It's never happened. 
So I'm confident with that guarantee because there is no way you can feel the way you feel and have quote unquote normal results. It's impossible. There's something going on that's causing these issues. We will find them with the testing that will give you the power and the tools and the ability to move forward, understanding your body and preventing these things from happening again. That's all that we really want, right? Yeah. Yep. And power to the women. So thank you all for joining us. Thank you, Stacey. I appreciate you sharing your story. Thank you also for being an example of doing the work and doing it when it's hard. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Moving forward. <laughs> and we are wishing you so much healing as you are on the the bet the better side now, the bright side, right? Yes. Thank you. Coming out of it. Okay. Thank you and goodbye to all. Okay. Bye.